Now, a lot of people have asked me, Dill, do you have any scary stories? Have you ever experienced anything that is out of this world, whether it's ghosts, aliens, you know, what it, whatever? Um, and the answer is yes. Yes, I've had uh, two separate uh, incidents that have happened. And for those who have tuned into the live streams and know everything about me, you've probably heard these stories. But for those who haven't, this video might, might be of interest to you. Um, I'll probably break these down into two separate videos. But uh, this first story um, basically happened back when I was in high school. And this was around, I want to say, homecoming. You had your homecoming dance. And then after that, you'd go out and you'd hang out with your friends, your date, whatever. Well, this particular night, I want to say I was a sophomore or junior in high school. And we decided we were going to go out, have a few beers, and go out into the country, drive around, and go to this haunted house. It was this abandoned house out in the middle of nowhere, literally in the middle of a cornfield. And one of our friends knew about it and said, let's go in there. I said, okay, that sounds awesome. So we all hop into a couple vehicles and we drive out in the middle of nowhere. This is outside of Green, Iowa. And there's this old house that's just boarded up and it's got plants and shit growing all the way around it. And so we roll up to this house in our, in our two vehicles and, you know, we're kind of looking it over and it's like, this is really creepy. Now, keep in mind, this is probably 11 o'clock midnight. Um, so it's dark, it's creepy, it's, it's still, I'd say, nice weather, you don't, we did, we had, you know, normal clothing on, it was probably anywhere from 50 to 65 degrees, somewhere in there. Um, and so we start walking around this house, trying to find a way in, because all the, all the windows are boarded up. And on top of that, there are literal trees and, and very tall, you know, plants everywhere. It's like a forest in front of this house because it's so overgrown that it's not been, you know, taken care of in years. And so we're trying to find a point of entry. We look everywhere. We can't, there's nothing. There's no open window, no nothing. We have to break in. Now being high school kids that are, that are stupid and dumb, we decided let's just rip one of the uh, plywood paneling off and get in through the window because the window at this point I think was busted. There was no window there. It was just a piece of plywood over this window, but it was nailed down. And we looked through a couple of them and we couldn't find any that were loose. So we, had, we finally got to one that was had one corner that was a little bit loose. We were able to pry it off and uh, get in that way. Now getting through the window, like I said, you had to go through a bunch of uh, tall shrubbery, trees, whatnot to get to this window. So we finally got in the house through the window in the trees and we kind of were in this living room area. Um, what's weird about this house is it was still furnished. It's like the people who lived here just up and left like that. And you know, there was old, old, you know, box TV, old style uh, sofa, recliner, um, really old antique furniture, stuff like that. And so we start looking around and we have our flashlights out. I remember at the time I had like an iPod 5 with a flashlight and a recording and had a flip uh, camera recorder. And so I'm, I have, I'm dual wielding these things and we're looking around. We want to go to the basement first. That's our first objective. Let's go to the basement because it's probably the creepiest spot. Well, we go to the basement and the stairs are blown out. There's a hole in the stairs and they don't look safe even if we tried, you know, to jump this ledge or this, you know, uh, hole. So we decide it's probably not a good idea to go down there. And so we say, let's just explore the rest of the house and then we'll go up upstairs. So we explore the rest of the house and this house isn't very big. I mean, it's a two story house, but you know, there's probably a couple of rooms, three rooms on each floor. We explore the first house and there's nothing. Now to put an idea of what this house looked like in your head, imagine, um, like I said, an old antique style house, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, but remember this is abandoned. So there have been animals living in this house uh, for probably years and years and years. Raccoons, possums, skunks, you name it. And so there is, animal shit all over the floor so no matter where you're walking you are crunching on animal shit and not to mention the floors are creaky and so we finally decide let's go upstairs now in this group there was me and my buddy and the rest of them were females we all had a bunch of girls there and we were you know kind of showing off our our, uh, our guns a little bit you know let's let's uh we're not scared of anything kind of attitude you know how how, how high school boys are are and and so we get up to the, the base of the stairs and we're looking up and we're like, damn, that's kind of creepy. And everyone just kind of gets this weird vibe right away that no one really wants to go upstairs. Even though we came there, we were all confident, we were all being all cocky, no one really wanted to go upstairs. 
And so I said, you know, I obviously really want to because I think it's fun. I, I, I enjoy the thrill. I like the scared atmosphere. I say, let's go. Let's go upstairs. And the girl said, no, we don't want to go upstairs. We're going to stay here. It's scary, you know. And so I, I tell my buddy, let's just go upstairs and, and show them there's nothing, nothing scary about it. You know, let's kind of show off a little bit. And uh, so my buddy's like, okay, fine. And so we start ascending the stairs. And, and again, at this point, you can hear the creaks of the old stairs as you're walking up them slowly, um, trying to avoid tripping and falling because you're walking on animal shit the whole way up these creaky stairs. We get about halfway up the stairs and we hear a big thud from upstairs. Something upstairs just fell. My buddy uh, at that exact moment said, nope, screw this, I'm out. And he, he walks in a fast paced hurry down the stairs. He says, I'm out, I'm not, I'm not going upstairs. And so at this point, everyone's like, uh, you know, we, sh we should just go. This is weird. This is getting scary. And I said, how much do you want to bet I'll go up there? Because at this point, I was like, you know, I'll do it. And so they dared me to go up all the, all the way upstairs and, and check all the rooms by myself. And so I said, okay. Now, at this point, remember, I have my flip recorder and my iPhone as my flashlight. Now, this flip recorder wasn't very good. It was one of those cheap $20 cameras. Um, so it wasn't really worth a shit. But... Still, nonetheless, I was trying to record something. So I get up to the top of the stairs. My heart is racing, by the way, because in my back of my head, I'm thinking there was a thud uh, upstairs. Now, it, what I was thinking is it was probably an animal, like jumping off of a piece of furniture or whatever. It had to be an animal because obviously when you look around, there's animal shit everywhere. So I'm thinking, okay, this can't be that bad. It's probably just a, a raccoon. So I'm rounding up to the top of the stairs. Now this is just a straight up flight of stairs. And I get to the top. And at this point, like I said, I was, I was pretty fucking scared. I wasn't showing it, but I was. I turned to my left, and there's a, a short hallway with a door on each end. I turned to my right, short hallway, same thing, a door on each end. I decided to go right. Now, at this point, I am shitting bricks. I am, I am terrified because it's just a creepy atmosphere. It's a creepy house. Now, I can still hear my friends chattering downstairs, so that helps a little bit. I can still hear them. So as I turn right, I go down the short hallway, and there's two doors. I open the door to my on my right hand side, and it is just an extra be bedroom, spare bedroom, uh, with a little bed in it, and some old fashioned wallpaper, nothing fancy, and it was clearly empty, very tiny room. The door on the left was locked. The door was locked or just jammed shut. I didn't really push it out too hard. I kind of just was, oh, it's, it's locked. I can't open that one. So I turn around and I go back down the other hallway. Now, as I'm walking down this hallway, there's a door, like I said, on my left and on my right. I decide I want to go to the door on the left first. So I open that door and it's a bathroom. It's just a tiny little bathroom with a sink and a toilet. That is it. Um, there isn't even a bathtub in it. It's just a sink and a toilet. And, and so I say, okay, there's this one room left. Let me turn around and I'm gonna open this room. Now this room was different than the rest because this one, the door was closed more than what the other ones are. The other ones were open more a gap like there was there was really not much opening them they were just kind of halfway open I guess this one was closed almost all the way and I will never forget this exact moment so I basically slowly cranked the door handle and pushed the door open this whole time remember I had the flip recorder in the iPhone so I have to kind of hold them with one hand here and I slowly cranked the door handle and I push open the creaky door put the flip recorder back in my right hand and I look through the, the door as I walk slowly to the room and instantly my heart dropped. What I was looking at was something terrifying. It was the most horrifying image I've ever seen in my life. Behind the bed was this creature, this man, I don't know, but it was staring back at me kind of cowering behind the bed looking and I can remember his hands or its hands were on the bed and I could see its eyes and its scraggly hair it had like scraggly white hair and the skin was gray it looked like gray skin now that could be just because it was a homeless guy that was dirty right and and so I immediately said holy fuck and I, I slammed the door shut I went back downstairs in a very like basically sprinting downstairs and I said we gotta go we gotta go we gotta go and I said, there's someone up there. There's someone fucking up there right now. 
And so the girls started screaming. We had to go back out this one window we came in, which is by the living room. Now the living room was facing the stairs. So the, it's just a straight shot from this window. Like when you're walking down the stairs, you can see the window you need to go out of. Now, like I said, remember in, you know, at the beginning, I said that this window was hard to get through because there was so much shit you had to, you know, trudge through trees and shit. So it took a while to like get through the window and walk out. So I'm the last one in line. The girls start going through first. Um, you know, my buddy went through, of course, because he was being a, you know, a pussy for, for lack of better words. And I'm the last one in line. So I am shining my flashlight down at this, this stairway, expecting this creature or man to come crawling up the ceiling or on, on all fours doing some weird demon shit up these stairs. I'm the last one. I'm just screwed. And every, you know, it's taken a while because you have, like I said, you have to go slow. So finally it got to my turn. I get through the window and we, we sprint back to the cars. We get in the car and they said, what'd you see? What'd you see? And I said, I saw a man upstairs hiding behind the bed. Like, but it wasn't just a man. It was a creepy man. Like it wasn't like, it was weird. And we started talking about it as we were driving back. And we said, how, how did he get in there? Because all the windows were boarded shut. We checked every window in to find the one that was easiest to get into. And everyone was nailed shut. They weren't loose except for the one we got into. But even that one, we had to pry off. It wasn't previously pried. So <clears throat> even to this day, I, I, I wonder what that thing was and how it got in there. Was it a homeless man? A squatter? If it was, why was there a squatter in the middle of a cornfield? That's a weird place to, I guess, be homeless? I mean, how do you survive out there? I, I don't know. Um, it's also a tiny town in Iowa. We don't have homeless people here. It, it, it was very odd and weird. And to this day, I don't know exactly what I saw. Whether it was some kind of ghost entity uh, that looked physical, possibly. Whether it was an actual homeless person or some kind of creature. Um, it was very humanoid, looked like a man. Um, but like I said, really gray skin, skinny to the bone and scraggly white slash gray hair. <clears throat> Definitely the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life, and that's 100% a true story. Now, if you're gonna ask, where's the flip footage? I, to be honest, do not know where that flip went to this day. I had it on my camera, and I remember the footage wasn't great. You couldn't really see it in detail, but I'm pretty sure you could see the figure that I caught there on the camera. Um, and I do not know where that little flip camera was. Remember, this happened probably, you know, close to 10 years ago now, so I don't have that footage anymore. At least I don't know where it's at. I'm sure it's still, you know, back home where I grew up, possibly. But, you know, that is definitely the scariest thing that has ever happened to me uh, in my life. So, uh, if you guys have any scariest things that have happened to you, scary paranormal, cryptid, uh, you know, whatever, post in the comments below. Uh, tweet me a message and and let me know if you guys have ever experienced anything similar to that or if you know what I saw does that sound familiar I don't I don't know so uh, but yeah without out the way guys thanks for watching I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed that